Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors, where we do wilderness medicine presentations, treatment in the outdoors, injuries, how to get back to urgent care of the ED or to base camp. I did a short a few days ago that got, and I figured it would, we got some quite a few responses with my channel. And some of the responses, obviously, about catfish things, do they have venom? And I said they're non-venomous. So what does that mean? Was I trolling? Or was I telling the truth? Was I embellishing? And if I was, why was I doing that? So we're going to get into that right now. But before I do, I also want to give an age of disclosure and explain the fact that I'm not a young guy. I'm 66 years old. And the YouTube phenomena is a little different. This was going to be a little retirement project for me. And I'm learning it's not going to cost you a dime. You know, I don't usually, it's not my personality. Hey, will you please like? Will you please write again? That's just not my style. In fact, 80, 90% of my videos, I don't ask for a thumbs up. It's just weird. It's awkward. However, seems like I'm learning if I don't go anywhere in this YouTube thing. It, one of the reasons is, is the algorithm. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Write a comment down below. Share it. Those things cost zip and helps us tremendously in YouTube then putting us out for on other platforms where people can see us and then we're going to get more exposure. The other thing which I'm learning is that if you have the video on and you're bored, just let it play through. You know, that would be fantastic. Drop the volume, volume down on the phone or the TV, but that would help me also. All right, now that I got that out of the way, let's get into the video. First, I'm going to show you some photographs, and we're going to run through those to explain to you a little bit about my past. When I grew up, my dad grew up in a three-room home, outhouse outside. So to him, when I was born and came in this world, hunting, fishing, trapping was not just, it wasn't a sport, it was a livelihood, basically. I mean, we're talking about commercial fishing, basically. 100, 150, 200 hooks on weekends, 100 to 200 catfish, and you're going to see some photographs here from bullheads, the channel cat, blue cat, and we would stock up for the uh, winter, and that's what it was about. We're talking cleaning fish for hours. So as a young pup, 9, 10, 11, 12, wasn't a lot of fun. Here we have over a hundred uh, bullheads, brown and yellow, followed by some channel catfish. And those were followed by three nice channel. You can see the specks on their belly. That, and then here we have a finger lean with the nice V-shaped tail. So before we jump into catfish stings, I want to tell you that there's three types of toxins, venoms. There's venom, there's toxin, and there's poisons. All right? So a poison is something like cyanide. A toxin is something that comes from a living organism. It doesn't have to be an animal. It could be a mammal, per se. It can be an insect. It can be a mushroom. That is a toxin. A venom has to have the ability to have an apparatus to expel that venom. So we got to get that down first. So a mushroom can be toxic and poisonous. But a lot of poisons are definitely not toxic. So try to follow that logic. Now, a spitting cobra, for example, that can have its venom. It can be injected, it can be spat in the eyes, and it can be absorbed. So that's important to note also. So the three types of venom. Then, <clears throat> before I jump into a catfish sting, we need to talk about non-venomous snakes. So why is that and does that make sense? So I'm going to show you a picture here of an eastern hognose snake. And then we're going to show a picture of a garter snake that was in my backyard. Those are actually venomous. Can you believe that? Now they're not even listed as venomous. So what do I mean by that? 98% I even have herpetologists that are split on this. Some will say they're venomous, some will say they're not venomous. So they are of the species of colubrid snakes, and 
Collier bred, they have a gland called Dvorny's gland in the back of their jaw. And that gland produces a venom that trickles down a grooved tooth. It doesn't have an apparatus to inject it per se, but it helps them with their prey. It can cause a nasty reaction, but it's innocuous, basically no severe outcome to man. So is that venomous? Well, not sure. How would you classify that? Because they sure aren't classified as venomous. So that's important to lay a foundation first, talking about these two non-venomous snakes. So from a psychological perspective, we have to look at people's reaction also to media and how the media portrays catfish stings or anything for that matter. They sell on fear. There are people's personalities that they see a green light, a yellow light, and a red light at a stop sign. Okay, so they see these lights. Green means go, red means stop, and yellow means proceed with caution. Not so fast, no pun intended. There are many individuals that are so fearful of that, that yellow light means red to them. Those are the ones that you're driving behind where your groceries fall into the floor. So it's very black and white. It has to be venomous or it has to be non-venomous. There's no in between. And that is not 100% accurate in the outdoors. Also, you need to realize my goal here is to educate and to do basically wilderness medicine. And it is not to induce fear at all. So I have to think about my liability. I've seen for 40 years, on average, 800 to 900 patients a month. And in all of those patients, I've taken one catfish barb out of someone's skin. And we're gonna get into that at the end of the video. All right, let me show you something else. This is a reference book by Goldfranks, Toxicologic Emergencies. This thing weighs about 10 to 15 pounds. It's about 20,000 pages on everything. Toxic mushrooms, poisonous snakes, excuse me, venomous snakes, the whole nine yards. Assessment and treatment. It has, when you look up catfish stings, it has one line. One line only in the whole book. So what does that tell you? Well, I'll tell you what it tells me. It tells me that if the catfish sting is venomous, which they have some minor venom glands in there, no question about it, it is of medically no concern. And we're gonna explain that, so hang on. First of all, there has not been one reported, reported, mortality of catfish venom causing a death in the United States. Catfish venom causing a death from a blue cat, flathead, channel cat, bullhead, brown or yellow bullhead, white bullhead is on the East Coast. Not one. So there's no money to be made like with, um, you know, snake venom. You know, you're looking at five to six thousand dollars a vial. And also, it's a little more dramatic than some poor, you know, as I grew up, blue-collar redneck down in southern Illinois catching a catfish and getting stung. And I have been stung 25 to 50 times at least by catfish barbs and have had some infections. So let's go through some cases, shall we? So before I jump into the photographs, I do want to mention that in 2009, out of the University of Michigan, a, guest, a researcher by the name of Jeremy Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, did a, what it appears to be a fairly intense study and found that about 1,600 catfish have, have a very nasty venom. And he states, and I've looked at almost everything the guy's published, and he states he did histological studies, but he doesn't, I can't find out, he probably does. I can't find the original study. What is he seeing under the slide? How does the venom react? There's three types of venom. That, there is um, cytotoxic venom that affects the skin. There's hemotoxic venom that affects the vascular system. There's neurotoxic venom that basically affects the nervous system and will slow down and stop your breathing. So we know about like the black widow spider, for example, that is a neuromuscular venom. 
And after 2009, the right guy is gone off the face of the earth in terms of research. So, hey, Jeremy Wright, if you're out there and you run across this, you know, my contact information is down below. Maybe we could do something together. Maybe we get these studies going. Something. I would be very interested in doing that because it really, the catfish venom has not been well studied. So, let's talk about case studies. So, in this study, uh, not really a study, this is a case presentation, and thanks to Consultant 360, this two-year-old got a catfish barb in their foot. And the kid did great. He was discharged on an antibiotic, clindamycin, and did fantastic. No venom intoxication. And then, in this study here that you're going to see, look at the headlines. Missouri catfish nearly kills a Missouri man. Holy cow, it's the catfish sting. The venom almost got this guy. Nope, not at all. As we talked about waterborne illnesses, and we talked about prophylactic treatment of waterborne illnesses, which is very important, this guy had a puncture wound and it was near his knee. In fact, it may even actually went in the joint capsule of his knee, and he got a serious infection of Aeromonas and got septic, which means your whole body gets sick, fever, got really bad, and that is what happened no catfish envenomation, death, or illness at all. Then, in this last one, again, you know, fear sells. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, how you doing? All right, it's awesome, isn't it? All right, in this one, a catfish wound kills a Virginia fisherman. All right, so what happened in this one? Still not an envenomation of the venom. This guy, this guy did not die from a catfish envenomation. Once again, puncture wound, delayed treatment, and then goes in and is very, very ill and gets septic and dies from a waterborne illness. So I got a couple more here. This is NCBI, and they tout this as these catfish. Um, and venomations, and here's the problem. You have to read the study. You can't just assume it's a North American catfish. When you review the study, they actually dealt with African catfish, which are clearly different than the North American variety. And then here's another one from the Wilderness Medical Journal, from, uh, I think it's the Wilderness Medical Society, and you can check out that. So I'm gonna put that one up here also. All right, so what do you do? You're five to seven days out, you're fishing, or you're in Canada on a fantastic fishing trip, uh, you're fishing for walleye, you nail a catfish, you bring him up, and you grab him, and he nails you with a dorsal fin or his pectoral fin, and, he, and that barb goes into your hand or your arm. How are you going to deal with that? So if the barb is completely stuck in there, and you're a long way away, then you're gonna to have to clip that off and you are not going to pull this out the way it went in. It's gonna to have to go out the exit side. The barb basically is like a harpoon. So that, you're not gonna get it out. It also depends on the depth. If it only in a 16th or a quarter of an inch, you can obviously pull that out. But if it's deep, it's not gonna happen. The main thing on these is like we've talked about with puncture wounds and any kind of wound. You're going to irrigate it and irrigate it and clean it. You're going to bandage it. You're going to wrap it. If you have, which we've talked about having in emergency situations on long trips, having antibiotics, you can go ahead and start those till you get back and assess. Tetanus. This is a puncture wound. All wounds you should have tetanus, but puncture wounds are high risk. And this is what I was saying the other day when we did waterborne illnesses. So the main problem from catfish stings is the water it's living in, it's a puncture wound, it goes into your arm or your leg, it's some, most of the time it's pulled back out, it doesn't stay in there, your skin goes whoop, and basically closes back up and trapping this microscopic bacteria. Those are the issues. There has not been one clinical recorded death from catfish envenomation 
in the United States from Venom. So that's what I meant with my short. That's what I was talking about. Uh, yeah, probably a little bit of trolling, pun intended. I hope that helps. I hope it clears it up. If you're taking a multiple choice exam, catfish stings do, or catfish uh, barbs and fins do have venom, but they are medically inconsequential to the homo sapien. All right, guys, keep your eyes on the rise and your face to win. We'll see you next time.